Hi everybody, uh, Nathan Ronan, CFA here with another update. This one on the 2024 changes to the CFA curriculum at levels one and level two, and for 2025 for the level three program. Uh, before I get into this for the level one program, if you'd like to continue receiving these updates, if you find them helpful, please press the subscribe button now and the notifications uh, bell as well, so that whenever I add one of these updates to our YouTube channel, you have an opportunity to be one of the first people to see them and get what's going on in the industry, in the CFA world. Okay, um, well, <laughs> they announced it a little bit earlier than expected, and that's okay, but the CFA Institute came out with their announcement that we are undergoing major changes in the level one, level two, and level three programs going forward into 2024 and 2025 by creating a more focused curriculum and by also adding a hands-on learning component, also known as practical skills modules. In this particular segment, I'm just going to talk about level one. I'll have a separate one for level two and for level three because I want to keep it, you know, contained. Again, I don't want to go over all the details that are exactly described already in their press release and in their release and on their website. And so I'm going to go over it very briefly, but I want to uh, also give my own opinion because that's what people have been asking for. Do I think this really is a, you know, deal breaker? Does this change anything? Is this very helpful? Is this not helpful? Is the CFA exam going to be harder, easier? I mean, there's lots of questions that people have, and this is very typical because every time the CFA Institute comes up with some kind of revision to the exam or the format of the exam, candidates just run, they're running around with like, like a chicken with no neck. Where, where, what, what happened? What happened? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it goes crazy. And in the end, everybody is pretty resilient. I mean, we're professionals and people can make the changes and adapt with the changes. Okay, so let me just quickly describe what's going on and then my two cents on it, whether you should worry about this or not. Okay, one of the things that the CFA Institute and the CFA program in generally that they administer has been battling is the relevance of the credential. And that happens to every credential out there. Are they keeping up with the times? Are they giving the candidates what they need to succeed on the job? Are they just refiltering the same old stuff over and over again? Is there any on the job application to this? Those are the kinds of things that people are always concerned about when they are investing in their education and investing in a certification or a designation. Just like when you were applying for colleges. People want to make sure that whatever they're learning in college is going to help them on the job or in the real world, okay? And when they don't see that, they start to get a little nervous and they wonder whether the money they're spending and the time that they're spending, which is also money, is worth it. So the CFA Institute has been under pressure both from candidates and probably from the, you know, the real world, meaning the uh, corporations that promote the CFA program or allow their candidates to take it that a lot of candidates are coming into the workforce with skills that are not relevant or skills that they don't have that are necessary, especially technical skills. And also that much of the um, content of some of the program, especially at level one, people have ever already had in their undergraduate degrees. So what the CFA Institute decided to do is to obviously save the credential from, you know, being, um, you know, a second rate credential and maintain its relevance and its you know, primacy in the uh, world of investment analysis by adding a practical skills module at level one, okay? And this practical skills module at level one is going to take form in either financial modeling, if that's what you're interested in, component, or in terms of a fundamentals of Python, okay? Now, whichever practical skills module you're going to do, the modules are going to be a combination of videos, multiple choice questions. There's also going to be some case studies in order to develop your candidate skills. Now, these practical skills modules are going to be separated from the actual core curriculum exam. Okay, that's very important. However, in order to get your exam results released, you will need to complete this fundamentals of Python or fundamentals of financial modeling uh, practical skills modules before you get your exam results. So if you sign up in the near future for the February 2024 level one exam or the May 2024 or August or November, you will need to complete these practical skills modules 
as I said, either the introduction or fundamentals of Python or the financial modeling, you'll need to complete those before the exam results for your exam are released. So if you take the exam in February 2024, and it's usually, let's say, eight weeks before the exam results come out, you'll have to have completed this module that you selected prior to that eight-week period. If not, your exam results will not come out. Now, again, these are addressing the needs of the, you know, of the, of the real world that people want to see people with and candidates with technical skills. So those people that can benefit from learning or understanding Python will use that. People that want to develop their financial modeling skills will use the financial modeling module. Okay. In addition to that change, what about the actual core curriculum, the actual curriculum? Well, many times candidates have complained over the years, and rightfully so, and I was a candidate as well at one point, that the uh, level one program is just full of too much too many readings, too much information, too much things to retain for a 180 question exam, okay? And that a lot of the material is actually stuff that people have had in their undergraduate degrees or in their MBA program. And therefore it's not really useful. And that they're spending much more than 300 hours trying to get through all of this because it's always been advertised that, well, you need to have about 300 hours. Well, people were putting in 400, 500 hours and they were not happy with that. So the CFA Institute has decided to streamline their curriculum by taking some core material from the old program and still having them, but not including them for testing, for testing, but assigning them as pre-readings. So for example, if you don't have a very strong background in time value of money or statistics or some of the basics of accounting, the, all of those readings have been removed from the in the 2024 program and designated as separate pre-readings that are not tested on the actual exam. Now, that's a great thing because many people will feel there's less readings, less time that they have to, they don't need to do the pre-readings because they're not gonna get tested on it. But let's face it, and here's my two cents. If you've been out of school for four or five years, or even three years, or you've been out of school even longer, 10 years, or you didn't have courses in statistics or financial statement analysis or uh, microeconomics, well, you might have to still do those pre-readings so that you can make the adjustment to the more advanced topics that are being covered in the curriculum. So some people, it might be a blessing, but I think personally for many people, they're still gonna wanna go and brush up on the knowledge that they should have had uh, coming out of college and go back and read and refer to these pre-readings. That's fine, it's gonna be a separate package and you can do that because I know from experience when people come to use my core curriculum or when they come to study with me to pass their level one exam, they're always saying, um, you know, how much, you know, I, I have a background in this, or I have a background in this, or I don't have a background in this, or I don't have a background in this. And I see a lot of times people do not have a background in microeconomics or statistics, or they don't know how to use their financial calculators, or they don't understand the basics of time value of money, or they don't have basic accounting skills. Those are all going to be now in the pre-readings, and you're still going to have to read them in order to make the jump to the more advanced topics or the more advanced start that you're going to have in the curriculum that you're getting tested on. So that's you know a good thing and a, and a bad thing. Good thing for some people that remember all their stuff, maybe a little bit more work for those people that are not sure or forgot their knowledge. But the other component, the uh, increasing the uh, technical skills of the candidates as they join companies or as they're working by getting them to do financial modeling or improving their practical skills by understanding uh, the, uh, the basics of Python. I think that's a very good thing. I think that shows a wise move on the, on the, on the uh, part of the CFA Institute to get companies to realize that this designation is continuously evolving. It's not staying static. It's not regurgitating the same concepts as the 1960s and that they're moving with the times. I think that this is very important for prep providers like myself. I think it's important for candidates and I think it's important for the, um, if you will, the long-term viability of the CFA Institute and the CFA program. So that's my two cents on this. So please don't worry about this so much. If you're really worried, prep providers like myself will help you through it. You'll still be responsible for pretty much a curriculum and the questions are still gonna be 180 questions at level one. You're still gonna, and they're gonna be on more advanced topics. And that's where I'm gonna help you to make sure you understand those advanced topics. And then I'll have segments that will go over the pre-readings or the introductory readings that you don't get tested on, but will refresh your memory. So don't worry about all these changes. Sometimes change is good. Many times change is good. And I look at this as a welcome change, but it is going to at least uh, change the way people are studying for the exam and hopefully reduce it for some candidates, the number of hours 
it might increase it for some others, but at the same time, it'll add this practical skills component, which would enhance it for everybody involved. Thank you very much for listening to this, and I hope you have a great day. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm at chalkandboard.org. Thank you.